have a lot going on. We got uh, Georgia and TCU to see who is the king of the land in college football. Yes, indeed. It's time for the Natty. Finally. I mean, why not? What is it? The 10th of January already for crying out loud. So we got the Natty tonight. We got the Kings and the Magic. And uh, boy, how bad have the Kings looked on this homestand? Three games left, uh, Orlando, and then the two games with the Houston Rockets. Ryan and Sacktown will come on with us, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then, of course, you got the NFL and the craziness that went on over the weekend. I did a rant on this today. Uh, I'm so tired of Mark Davis. You know, I, I really am. Now you're complaining about your stadium being full of the opposing fans. You know what? Go out and put a good product on the field, all right? Go out and win. Go out and win. I mean, last year you did. You made the playoffs. We weren't hearing about, you know, the stadium full of the other team's fans. This year your team stinks. Your fans don't want to go to the games. Your fans don't want to pay the money. So shut up. Really. Stop it already with this nonsense. I mean, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Really is unbelievable. I, I, I tell you, there's nothing I hate more than the complaining of Mark Davis, who's done a horrible job with that football team. Horrible. Awful. What a, what a terrible year for the Raiders. All right. How about Pete Carroll? And Brian Dable, the coach of the Seahawks and the Giants, raise your hand if you had both those teams in the playoffs when the season began. Uh, I don't think so. It's an amazing story. Carroll, of course, we know about. Brian Dable, we didn't as a head coach. And, you know, a lot of people feel the Giants have a legitimate chance to beat Minnesota. Not many people are giving Seattle a chance to beat San Francisco, but that's a hell of a job coaching. Great job coaching. Dan Campbell, 9-8 and eight with the Lions, had a hell of a year coaching his team. I don't want to hear about they should be in the playoffs. No, they shouldn't be in the playoffs. All right? The reason why they're not in the playoffs is they didn't win the games they had to win. So that you play 17 games, you can't complain about not being in the playoffs. All right? They had their chances. They didn't get it done. And speaking of not getting it done, that would be Green Bay at home, who the Lions beat. And, you know, is there... Did you watch Aaron Rodgers' post-game press conference? Does it seem to you like that guy's going back to Green Bay? But we've heard this before from Aaron, and then he ends up back after thinking about things. But I don't see it. I don't think Green Bay is close to winning anymore. And Aaron Rodgers probably doesn't want to be a part of that. And all indications based on what he said was a guy that is not planning on um, being back playing quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. So those are some of the storylines. If you're a Cowboys fan, do you really think that Dak Prescott is taking you very far in the playoffs? Because I sure don't. I really don't. All right. I'm not convinced that the Niners will have an easy game against the Seahawks. I'm a Niners fan, and they make me nervous. It's a divisional game. Divisional games generally are close, but the Niners are a far superior team on both sides of the football. Quay Walker, how big of a penalty was that? Huge. Gave him the football at the five-yard line. He got a very good player taken off the field. You know, we talk about the stupidity of athletes. It's almost like they don't care about the team. It's almost like they don't care about the team. They only care about themselves. It really is sad. It really is sad. So uh, trying to connect with Sean Salisbury, and uh, hopefully we'll hear from him. We got basketball tonight, but I want to bring in Ryan in Sacktown here, who is uh, joining me. And Ryan, man, your team that you follow and my team that I root for, you're a big Seahawks fan. I'm a big Giants fan. How the hell do these teams – I mean, I'm speechless. I really am. The fact that both these teams are in the playoffs, when you and I and so many people thought they might be buying for the first overall pick in the draft this year is unbelievable. Yeah, it is, Grant. If uh, we had a parlay for that at the beginning of the season, we'd be rich men. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But um, it's a testament to uh, coaching. Obviously, on the New York Giants side, Gable has completely turned that program around. 
Um, as far as the Seahawks go, they just hung in there and they hung in there. And when they needed to get a little bit of help, they got it from the Lions last night. So we'll see as it goes. But yep. very, very cool. Uh, no, it's not hard, Garrison, to beat the same team three times in a season. That's a huge myth. It's not true. And I don't really know why people say that. No, if you're better, it's not hard to beat a team uh, three times in one season. I remember I heard that, you know, when the Giants won their first NFC championship game in the Super Bowl era, they, they played Washington. And they had beat them twice during the regular season. Oh, it's hard to beat a team three times in a season. No, they shut them out in the championship game, 17 nothing. No, it's not hard to beat a team three times in a season. I'm sorry. I do not agree with that. Uh, I do think Seattle's going to have a top time winning. I think the Niners will win because, objectively, the Niners are better on every element of the football field. All right? we Now, we don't know about Brock Purdy in a big game, so I'll, I'll put that aside. The, the 49ers just better football team, period. No, the 49ers absolutely are the better team, but, you know, these teams know each other very well. And one thing about Seattle, Seattle, they like to play ugly. And if the Niners get into an ugly matchup with Seattle, you don't know how that's going to go. And the weather may be a factor in this game as well. But um, the Niners, you look at all three phases, they are head and shoulders better than the Seahawks. And we'll see what Geno Smith shows up. Big lights you, just, you just made an interesting point, the, the precipitation for – who knows how many straight days. Yeah, the field is covered, but that could be an issue in this game. That could be an issue in this game. Now, both teams are playing on the same field, but it could be a factor. No doubt. And, uh, you know, Seattle fans, they travel well. I'm sure the Niner Lil to you will uh, show up as well. But um, the field, that that plays a little bit more towards Seattle, right? The I Niners agree. Are a yes. Team. Seattle yeah. is more of challenges, short passes. Yep. So um, that could be a huge factor. I think Mike McCarthy would be gone if Dallas loses to Tampa. Yes, I do. Don't you think so? Yeah, I think McCarthy's definitely gone. He is on his last string in Dallas. And it's funny that he's had this many chances with them. Hey, Grant, I got to hop off real quick. Yep. Can I come back? I'll put you out. No problem. No problem at all. Yeah, so I can't see. Listen, Tampa is, to me, not even an average football team. They're just not. But people think they're going to win because they have Tom Brady. And I know you can't bet against Tom Brady, but Tom Brady is a... This team has not played well, Tampa. So how am I supposed to go with Tampa just because they have Tom Brady? You know? I'm not one that can do that. You know, I, I think they're just a bad football team right now. Uh, divisional games are always tough. You know why? Because there's no secrets. You know each other inside and out. But in this particular case, the Niners just overmatch Seattle. And defensively, I mean, the 49ers are going to give Seattle a really difficult time moving a football up and down the field. They really are. So, you know, again... You look at the games coming up this weekend, and I think, personally, the 49ers-Seattle game will be the most lopsided game of them all. I really do. I think that will be a very lopsided game. I I think most of the games, and I'm not going to go over all of them right now, I could see Buffalo blowing out Miami too, but I think that a lot of these games – all right, are going to be very tight. I don't think San Francisco and Seattle is going to be a tight game. I really don't. I mean, I, again, I just think Seattle's going to have trouble scoring. I just do. And you talk about the field, if it's a little sloppy. I mean, the Niners have a solid running game with Christian McCaffrey now. They have George Kittle, Samuel, Ayuk. Uh, I just... You know, again, the 49ers, to me, are going to beat Seattle and beat them convincingly. I really think so. Matter of fact, I don't see any other scenario right now other than Philadelphia and San Francisco playing for the NFC Championship game. I just don't. I could see the Giants beat Minnesota, although, you know, the Vikes got to be the favorite. I could see Dallas beating Tampa. All right. But, I mean, you tell me, 
Do you think Seattle's going to beat San Francisco? I sure don't. I just don't see it. So to me, this is looking like a Philadelphia, San Francisco, NFC Championship game. I'm not totally sold on Philadelphia right now until I see who's lining up on the field for them, all right, in the second week. I want to see if Lane Johnson is playing. I want to see what that offensive line looks like, first and foremost. Obviously, they'll have their quarterback back who played yesterday in Jalen Hurts. You know, he, he's going to really need that extra week. So uh, it's all good. Yeah, good point. Mitchell is back as well. So that's going to be a big help for them. All right. You know, Jimmy G's not playing unless Brock Purdy gets hurt or is having a bad half. All right. That's when he would come back. Can't. You know, you go with the the hot guy. You go with the hot guy. All right. I I don't. I don't. All right. I really don't think that you look at any quarterback change with a team that's hot. If Garoppolo's okay, and you have Purdy who plays bad in a half, then at that point. You can make a change, but you're not making a change now. All right, you got the pooch all settled down? Yeah, yeah, we're good to go. The milkman came. <laughs> the milkman. I didn't know they still deliver milk. Okay, uh, that's good to know. Yeah. That's good to know. The milkman came. All right. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you, are you with me? I know you're a Seahawks fan. I think that's going to be the biggest margin of victory of all of the games. I just think... I know it's a divisional game. I get that. But I just don't see Seattle staying on the field. And listen, I've been down on them. I've, I've doubted them. Yeah. I think Geno Smith may be the best story this year in the National Football League. I think this has been an incredible story. I mean, nobody wanted this guy. Nobody thought he could play, myself included. What right he's there. done this year for Seattle has been phenomenal. It has been phenomenal. I actually disagree. I know you think th winning against team three times in a season really isn't a thing. I think there is a little something to it, especially if it's a divisional team. Um, I think the playoff experience, Seattle doesn't have a ton right now besides Tyler Lockett and coaching. You look at our defense, we're pretty much new on that side of the ball. We've lost our leaders. But I think it's going to be closer than you think. I, I, think, the Seattle I think the Seahawks will have a chance going into the third quarter, but I see the Niners probably pulling away. I think it's going to, even though they know each other well, they'll fill each other out, but I don't see it as a blowout. And I think Purdy here is more of a wild card than Geno Smith. Yep. Well, I don't disagree with that last part. I do think they blow them out. And again, I don't think beating a team three times in a season is a big deal if you're better than them. That's just how I see it. I don't believe in the law of uh, percentages or whatever the hell you call it. Well, you're due to beat a team eventually. Now, if you lose to a team... Uh, and you lose to a team on a fairly regular basis, there's a reason why that happens. So we'll see. You know, uh, we'll, we'll, it, it's the playoffs. You know, one bad play, a bad snap on a punt, a blocked field goal. Uh, you know, again, all of that, all of that factors into it. All right. I want to spend uh, a couple of minutes, and we're going to be moving around a lot here based yeah. on the chat messages. Even if Sacramento wins tonight against the Magic, and beats the Rockets twice. This has already been a bad homestand. There's no other way to cut it. You're now 0-2, and you lost to two teams right now that are non-playoff teams in Atlanta and the Lakers. And you gave up 136 to a Lakers team that had played the night before. So to me, you know, it's already been a bad homestand. Yeah, no, absolutely, Grant. I mean, there's not much more to add on to that. And we've seen this too many times now in the season, especially when we've had homestands. Yep. So they've got a, a, I don't know what it is about this team, but it seems like they really like to put their backs against the wall at times. Yep. And they're going to have to do that in the next three games, starting tonight with Orlando, um, to salvage the homestand. Yeah, Malik Monk's not on the injury list, uh, so that's good news. And they missed him the other night. But, you know, again, I can't complain. Their Lakers are playing without Anthony Davis, so. You know, yeah, I sure. think sometimes you got to keep things in perspective. By the way, I know a lot of people, and De'Aaron Fox was complaining on that last sequence, uh, defending Schroeder, who went to the line, and then at the end of the game, the uh, NBA last two-minute report said that neither of those were incorrect calls. 
No, they were not incorrect calls. In fact, uh, Russell Westbrook likely should have had continuation. So if anything, right. the King got lucky there. Um, and everybody's talking about the refs. They're not talking about how the Kings panicked down the stretch. I mean, the inbound pass from Lyles to Fox, um, the possession where that was knocked out of bounds, Fox was triple teamed. They got a late shot on the shot clock. So those are the things that Sacramento fans yeah. should be talking about, not the referees. And Steph Curry is coming back perhaps tomorrow, which is earlier than people thought. And if if he's able to stay on the floor for – the rest of the season, the Warriors are going to elevate. So watch out for the Golden State Warriors this week. No doubt, Grant. I mean, the, the, I, Steph is such a stud and star. He can fit in with anybody, and that team's been together for a while. So I'm not going to see – I don't expect to see a big transition with him coming back into the mix, and they're going to move up fairly quickly if he plays well. All right, back to uh, the Kings and the Magic. You remember when they played – Earlier in the season, the Orlando front line gave the Kings a lot of problems. That was a very tight game, and the Kings found a way to win. So, you know, again, we always talk about matchups, Orlando record-wise, but matchup-wise has a couple of things yeah. that can give the Kings some fits. Yeah, uh, the Kings tonight, the no doubt rebounding is going to be a big key because the Magic are a little bit bigger. And this may be one of those games where you're not going to see Sabonis have 20 rebounds, 17 rebounds. His job may be to really clear out that middle, and that's where your Harrison Barnes, your Keegan Murrays, your Kevin Herters need to come down and crash and get those boards and run with them. All right, don't forget that coming up after the game tonight, uh, we'll have our post-game show right here on YouTube. So we're looking forward to that. And then the Rockets come in for two games. You know, right now, the good news for the Kings is everybody behind them and around them has been losing as well. So they haven't dropped in the standings uh, because the other teams in the West, Phoenix really struggling right now. Portland's really struggling right now. The Jazz continue to struggle. You know, the Warriors without Curry have been very Jekyll and Hyde, good at home, not good on the road, although they have just lost a couple of games at home. So, you know, that that's the only really positive I take out of this. The teams around the Kings are struggling as well. Sure, Grant. But, you know, to me, is it really a positive? Because that means if we would have won the games that we were supposed to win, that would have give us, given us that equity, a little bit more cushion than we have right now. So that yep. almost makes it worse. Um, but luckily, yes, they have struggled. Um, you know, by all means, this does not look like a playoff team. They are playing incredibly inconsistent right now. So yep. um, they're not going to struggle for long. If you look at the way the West, and I'm talking about the West in general, the West has set up. Uh, it's been a tight, tight conference all year long. All right. Uh, again, uh, so Bobo's out tonight, huh? health and safety protocols. I just saw that. I was not aware of that. So, you know, that's that's a break for uh, uh, Sacramento, you know. So, you know, right now, if you're the Kings, should take any break you can get because they're just not playing well. So, yeah, Cody, the answer to that question is yes. The answer to that question is yes, he's out uh, for the game. Uh, all right, what about the game tonight? Who are you taking, Georgia or TCU? I am riding with the hot hand. I'm going with TCU. And I know Georgia is 14 or no, defending national champions, but there's something about this TCU team. They, they're just rolling. They feel like they're not going to be stopped. And wow. uh, I, what a story. I think, I think yeah, great story. I think they win this game outright. I know that's crazy because it's a 13, 14 point line, but I think TCU finishes the job tonight. Well, you know, George has been on a hell of a run, right? Are they never going to lose another game? Right. So uh, I, I, here's what I hope. We had two phenomenal semifinal games in the college football playoffs that this game's going to be hard to live up to that, but wouldn't it be awesome if this game with two minutes left is up for grabs? Oh, it'd be amazing, Grant. I, I really hope. I, it's funny you bring that up because a lot of people have said, oh, it's going to be kind of like the Notre Dame-Alabama game, right? And yep. for the national title, Notre Dame just got blown away. I don't see that. I think it, it's going to be a good game, more like the Boise game when they had the Statue of Liberty play in the Fiesta Bowl and won it. Um, but, yeah, we saw great football. Hopefully we get to see the same tonight. All right, we talk about the week that was – and DeMar Hamlin's back in Buffalo and out of the hospital. That's incredible. If somebody had told you that awesome. on Monday night, you know, wow. All right. Uh, what happened in the Green Bay game yesterday with Quay Walker and his teammate with the team physician of the Lions? Regardless of what happened 
on Monday night in Cincinnati. Take that away for just a second. I, I just sometimes wonder what the hell goes through an individual's mind on a playing field like that. And then the way he left the field and the tunnel, uh, in that situation as well, your team is, needs to win to go to the playoffs. And your penalty not only gets you ejected, but advances the ball to the five-yard line where it's first and goal. I mean, I don't know how you walk. I really mean this. You're ejected. You're in the locker room. I don't understand how you face your teammates when they come in after losing that game. I really don't. Yeah. I mean, the answer, Grant, is they're not thinking. Uh, that's the only logical response that I can yep. really come to. Uh, it, it, you're immediately you're reminded of how sometimes these guys just step too far and they're not thinking about the situation. Situation caught up in the game, but – that's why the great players, they understand all those things. You would never see J.J. Watt make that mistake. You would never see, you know, players like that because situational never. football. But nope. you put your hands on an official. You never put your hands on a trainer. I mean, it, whether it's regular season or, you know, the games could send you to the playoffs. You don't do it. So just a knucklehead play. And if I'm his teammates, I, I'm just walking by. I mean, you're going to get some support, but that that's a bad penalty. Bad, bad, bad. You know, when you watched Buffalo yesterday and the way they opened up that game and everything that's going on in the emotion, I wonder if that's just – if this is just going to be a storybook ending. It's already been a storybook ending for DeMar Hamlin, but the yeah. rest of this team. That, to me, is, it's almost like fate, the, what's going on in Buffalo right now, and this is going to be their year. And this is going to be some story if the Buffalo Bills somehow – are able to advance to the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, I mean, it was, it's already a storybook, you know, running the opening, first time, first playback. Amazing. They return it for a touchdown with the guy going down the Buffalo sideline. So, um, yeah, they, this could be it for Buffalo. It could be that little thing that pushes them over the edge. Like you said, DeMar's back in Buffalo. Yep. So you got to imagine – some point he's going to be at the facility if they do make a deep run and that's only going to fire things up more so it could be their year and you know what i wouldn't be mad to see that because that's a great story all right uh greetings from Sac uh, from uh, seattle they say and i uh, hope that uh, you're doing well up there in the pacific northwest i i know that a lot of people disagree with me but T tony romo is just i can't i i really have a difficult time watching a game that Tony Romo's analyzing. I think the guy is horrible. I think he diminishes the game. I think he's been terrible for Jim Nance. Uh, I just, it, it, it just, I want to, I want to walk over and slap him in the head. I really do. Grant, you probably wouldn't have a right arm if you were working with Tony Romo because he doesn't know when after the touchdown yesterday. Just I know. Take those sounds, right? And is there a uh. fake? the break he's still trying to get one more comment in and it's just like lay out and let the moment sink in so i'm with you all on right. that all right we'll see you tonight after the game we've got internet problems with sean so you uh have a good evening enjoy the game uh, both games tonight and we'll talk to you uh, after the kings and the magic my friend sounds good hey grant can i ask you one more question of course nfl related yeah what do you think dolphins do before we go are you playing well, to he is healthy yeah. He's still in protocol. I just read that before we came on. So uh, if he's healthy, I'm 100% playing him. If he gets out of concussion protocol, I'm 100% playing him unless he doesn't want to play. So, yes, 100%. Not even thinking twice about it. Three concussions in one year, though? You, you if, he's clear to play, if he's clear to play by medical personnel, I'm playing him unless he does not want to play. All right? Uh, just for the uh, – we're on YouTube tonight. Thank you for asking what uh, app we're on. We're right here on YouTube. Yeah, I am playing him. If he's at a concussion protocol and he's been cleared by a neurologist, uh, both, you know, with the organization and independent, uh, and he and Tua wants to play, of course I'm playing him. Absolutely. Not even okay. thinking twice about it. Okay. It, it makes for an interesting debate. You know, I mean, if a doctor says you're okay to play, you're okay to play, but that that is a lot of concussions and we've seen some bad moments from him this season. How's it any different than George Foreman coming back to box at his age and continuing to get pounded in the head or, um, or any other boxer who has had uh, re repeated beatings and been knocked out a couple times in their career and they still come back and fight and fight and fight again? How's it any different than that? Much longer layoffs, number one. I mean, it's not different. It's the same injury, right? But they have longer layoffs in between fights. 
Okay, hey, but 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 breathe. you're not, but okay. So I'm going to stop you there for a minute. Okay. What about the study of the brain, which has been proven? It's not the same for every individual. This is we're assuming that because a boxer has a longer layoff, that their injuries to their brains. And again, I'm not putting words in your mouth. If I am, stop me. Yeah, is not as significant as a football player who may only go two weeks or three weeks. Do we really know that? Uh, no, I'm not a doctor. We don't know that. Um, I think it is the same injury. I mean, every concussion is going to be different. I don't think every concussion is the right. same. But right. just like any other injury, Grant, wouldn't you think having more time to heal up is going to make it inevitably a little bit better? Yes. Unquestionably, yes. But Again, I'm not a neurologist, so I'm going to go. Yeah. If you have a broken bone, when it's healed, it's healed, right? When it calcifies, it calcifies, and it's healed. So you you return to doing whatever you're doing, whether you work, whether you go to school, whether you have been using crutches, whatever the case may be. When you are no longer in concussion protocol, what does that mean for your brain? I don't know the answer to that question, but if you're not in concussion protocol, you are clear to resume your activities, then what is the right time to not play? Is it six months? Is it six weeks? Is it a year? Is it two years? Is it you should never play football again? See, that is the unknown, and that's why, to me, when an individual like this, if he does can clear, if he does clear concussion protocol, he ultimately should be the one that makes this decision because it's his life. It's not anybody else's life. It's no different than a boxer. It's no different than a race car driver who gets in and knows that the risk of death is there. I mean, Tua should be making that decision, in my opinion, once he is not in concussion protocol. But that's just me. Yeah, I, I, it's, a, it's a noble argument, Grant. I totally see that side. I just, I, I question, and if a doctor says you are fine to make that decision, then I, you defer to the doctors because you and I are not doctors. But I've got to wonder, does the protocol change as you have multiple concussions within a season? Is there another level of the protocol? It's a great you question. Know, how, great how question. How is that all negotiated into this? Great question. And you also have the domino effect of this and how bad the organization will be attacked if Tua does play because he's been cleared and suffers mm -hmm. another concussion. You and I both know Mike McDaniel will get killed. The general manager will get killed. The organization will be attacked. And I don't know if they'll ever recover from that. And I really mean that. So there's, there's another whole layer to this. All right. There's a whole personally. And again, I know that the, you, you don't approach this game to me. I don't think whether I don't think the, the Dolphins are going to win this game, regardless of who's playing quarterback. But 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 there is that aspect of this. And that is the ramifications long term that this could have on the organization if Tua goes back onto the field and has another head injury. Yeah, great point, Grant. Arguably, those would be much larger ramifications than losing yes. the uh, wild card game, you yes. know. And you, you wonder if that's something that's rolling through their heads or not. But uh, it has to be. Yeah, that that's an interesting take. That's a very interesting take because sometimes, just like I'm going to bring back your boxer analogy, you have to the referee has to make a call. The fighter is yep. going to want to keep fighting, right? Yep. But yep. that's why you have that middle person in there to say, you know what, even though the doctor says you're good to go, no, I'm not going to let this go any longer. So we'll see as the week goes on if he clears protocol. But I, I would like to know how that works when you've had multiple concussions in a season, if anybody knows out there. Listen, the Junior Seau story is very, very sad. But, you know, that's Awful. one. There's there, there are a lot of players that have played in the NFL that have had multiple concussions over their career many of the time didn't even realize what type of an injury they had because, you know, the, the protocol is completely different in this era of football than the previous era of football, and they're living productive lives in their 60s and the 70s. So, again, you, you, you can look at an individual case, but that doesn't apply to
to everyone and everyone's brain. So that's the unknown in this science with neurology, which makes this such a tricky call because you don't know what side of the fence two is going to be on when he's 60 or 70, assuming that he makes it to 60 or 70. It's a very interesting discussion, Ryan. And I think we can both agree there's not a simple answer to this. No, no, there isn't a simple answer. And I don't think there ever will be a simple answer to this, Grant, because just what you said, you hit the nail on the head. You don't know what's going to happen for that player, right. that individual in 20 yeah. or 30 years. Everybody's brain is different. So, yep. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you after the game tonight. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Sounds good, right. Grant. Have a good one. Good, good deal. Good stuff from uh, Ryan in uh, Sacktown. I uh, want to let you know that uh, we are brought to you by New Works Plumbing of Sacramento, locally owned for over 20 years. New Works has a fix for you. Just go to sacserviceplumbing.com or call the number on your screen. That's sacserviceplumbing.com. New Works, they've got a fix for you. All right. We will be back after the Kings game tonight right here on YouTube. Enjoy the game, both college football and the NBA. And thank you very much. Bye-bye, everybody.